Okay, good morning to everyone. So how are you today? So we hope that you are fine and happy. We also hope that the lectures that we had yesterday had been uh, worthwhile and enriching to everyone. So now we're back for the fifth installment of our lecture series for this week. So before we begin our lecture for this morning, I invite all of you to ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let us entrust ourselves to God once again, that all our aspirations may come into fruitful realization. So let us be aware of God's presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this online lecture. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, that we may use all the learnings that we will get in fulfilling of our tasks and responsibilities as individuals. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so before we start the introduction of our lecturer, um, please do not forget to like and share this live stream, of course, for the benefit of everyone, especially those who will be taking research this school year. Okay, without further ado, let me introduce our lecturer for today. So our esteemed lecturer for today belongs to the CSMA department roster of teachers. She is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Fisheries from the University of the Philippines, Visayas, Miyago Campus in 1993. She worked as an assistant researcher for a few years before pursuing and completing her master's degree in aquatic biosciences and PhD in Ocean Science at Tokyo University of Fisheries, Tokyo, Japan, in 2001 and 2004, respectively. She had been actively involved in the research of aquatic resources such as blue plankton, groupers, jellyfish, and lobsters. A few years after, after getting married and bearing a son, she decided to shift career to shift career. She took up education units and completed her professional teaching certification program at the University of the Philippines Open University in 2017. So she is a career service professional and a professional teacher since 2018. So at present, she is serving as a faculty member in the Senior High School Department of Colegio de Santa Monica de Anga. So her lecture for this morning is entitled, Practical Research, The Whys and the Hows. So our dear listener of the lecture, May I present to you Mrs. Maria Salvacion G. de Guzman. Thank you very much, Sir Ruben, for that uh, very kind introduction. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for watching. And I hope you could uh, stay with us until the end of my lecture so that you can learn not something, but some things about research. So practical research is actually close to my heart because um, I've been like practically living with it you now prior to becoming a teacher. And also, I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you. Um, I'd like to uh, share this opportunity to share with you um,
Okay, sorry. So, um, research is um, very important and uh, very close to my heart because I've been doing research for a number of years prior to becoming a teacher. And it also brings back some memories back in college when in one of my courses, our professor asked, when you will graduate someday, what would you be, uh, what would you become? And then some of my classmates answered, I'd like to become a sales representative because in the 90s, the shrimp industry was booming. So a lot of us were really aiming to work in uh, industry you know, of shrimp. So some of them answered, probably I'll be pursuing higher studies or research, but a lot of us answered that we'll be working in the shrimp industry. And some would say, I would be, I think I would be managing our own fish farm, something like that. And one of our classmates answered, I want to become a researcher. And our professor just said, oh, kaya lang, walang pera sa research. <laughs> but as if only money matters in the world, but of course, things doesn't um, go that way. My pera sa research, there is money in research. However, sorry guys, we will not be talking about it today. So going down to what really my business of uh, uh, discussion today is on practical research. But before I formally start, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the team behind this uh, lecture series. Uh, thank you very much. CSMA for giving me an opportunity to share uh, the knowledge that uh, I have you know, all these years that I have worked in research. Um, so practical research, when you say practical, it means practice. So it's some kind of saying that research is being put into practice or making use of research. Okay, so it's more something like a, more of a dynamic aspect of research than research per se. So today, I'll be discussing about practical research, the whys and the hows. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, my topics of discussion for today will be first, we will be defining what research is. And I would like to clear also some misconceptions or some um, misuse of the word research. Second, the whys of research. Why do we conduct research? Is it really important? Third, the hows of research. So how do we actually conduct research? Fourth, practical research in CSMA. So I'll be sharing with you in this part what my previ previous students have done in the class and what they have actually learned from the classes that we conduct every day. Next slide, please. Okay. When we hear the word research, a lot of people would say, research, di ba mahirap yan? Now, a lot of students in college cringe at the thought of working on their thesis. But is research really difficult? So, Let's try to unravel those things later on. So if you type research in Google, you'll probably get a long list of definitions. But here I am showing you two of uh, my favorite definitions you know, from uh, two sources. One of them is from Lydia and Ormbrod in 2018, which says that research is a systematic process of collecting analyzing and interpreting information in order to increase our understanding of a phenomenon one is interested in. Another is from Hampshire College, where he says that research is a process of systematic inquiry that entails collection of data, documentation of critical information, and analysis and interpretation of that data or information in accordance with suitable methodologies set by specific professional fields and academic disciplines. Okay, looking at this definition, have you noticed any keywords that are common between the two? Okay, next please. Next please. 
So you will notice here that there are words that are common now among the two definitions. So one of them is a systematic process. And then another one is process of systematic inquiry. So I highlighted them. So these keywords make research distinct from other endeavors that we do. So when you think of research, think of a process. So when you say systematic process, it means it follows a certain method, probably step-by-step -step procedures from the beginning until you attain your objective. Okay, next please. Okay, so let me clear out some of the misconception because sometimes research is kind of misused by other people. So sometimes we would hear our teacher say, please research on this. But actually, she's meaning to say that try to look for the meaning of some words. So if you're trying to find something, you know, by looking or seeking carefully, maybe through the internet, especially during the modern times, it is not actually researching, but searching for or finding some information. Next, please. And also very common among uh, the young people or millennials. Next, please. Have you heard the word Googling? Maybe it's it's very familiar to you. So actually, Googling has already been entered in the dictionary. So it's accepted when you say Googling, it means looking using search engine Google. If anyway, Google is probably the most popular search engines that we use uh, in seeking some information. So Googling is not actually also doing research, but also searching. Next, please. Another thing that we usually do, especially for students, is we download information from the internet, right? So when we download and read about them, for example, we feel that we are researching. And probably because a lot of people would tell you, please do some research about this or please research about this. And then sometimes I'd also say, my son say, mom, I have to do a research on this, but actually enough, you're not doing research, but searching, okay? so. All of this, you know, searching information through the internet is not actually researching. Not until you do something about the information you got from the internet, like you reflect on it, or if you use it, probably to increase your knowledge about something and apply it um, in your study, like doing research, then it, uh, it, would, it would become research if you use that information that way. Okay, so if what you really mean is that to find something or to know uh, more about something, maybe we better use the word searching instead of researching. So you will know, um, you, ha you have, I have shown you now a while ago the meaning of research, which says it undergoes a systematic process. So pag nagsisearch ka lang, it's not really a process, but only searching. Okay, so I hope we, we change that uh, uh, our behavior no? in using the word research. Next slide, please. Okay, so we'll be moving to the whys of research. Maraming tao nagtatanong, ano ba yung research na yan? Is it really important? Why do we do research? Okay, so unknown to many, research is being used in our daily lives. Okay, so at this moment, please try to look at things around you. At this moment, you're probably holding your cell phone, okay, or you're in front, working in front of your laptops, or look around you, there are gadgets, there are appliances around you. Probably you have also eaten your breakfast, or probably some of you are eating breakfast, okay. So actually, these are all products of research. So a lot of us do not know that we are already applying research in our everyday life. So let us look at 
more of the examples of what I am telling you. Next slide, please. So when we do research, we actually do it because we have a purpose. Okay, We are doing research because not only to increase our knowledge, but because we want to help other people. Okay, So actually, research can be divided into two according to its purpose. We have the basic research, which came from basic science, which asks the questions, why is this important? Why is this thing important? Why is this knowledge important? And then the other thing is what we call applied science, or this is where practical research comes in. So applied science is how can I use this? So it's like asking that question. I know about this, but how can I use this knowledge? Okay. So the purpose of research actually is to quench man's unending questions and to fulfill or to um what we call this to to uh, fulfill the needs of the world which is the ultimate con uh, consumer the humans okay so when you say basic science okay if you, as you can see here the basic purpose of basic science is to acquire new knowledge and understand complex processes. So basic research is conducted not really to, or you cannot really see the actual application of which. Some of the basic research actually uh, can be traced back many decades ago or even centuries ago, but we are now enjoying the benefits of those researches, okay? So in applied research, you are seeking solutions to real world problems. So that's why I like the concept of practical research because it's like uh, using research or making research into practice. There is some kind of a, a dynamic and very positive uh, vibe about saying practical research. Okay, so for example, in basic research long time ago, Okay, scientists discovered about the DNA. Okay, so the structure and chemistry of DNA. So nowadays, the technology is being applied, right? Like in, uh, uh, like for DNA uh, analysis, no, in forensics, right? So if you are trying to make sure that we are relatives we can probably or um, we are a family so we confirm it through DNA testing okay another thing uh, another example about basic research for example is uh, population of the dynamics of zooplankton so here you study about um, where do they live what conditions do they thrive in or what condition is best for them okay so that's basic research just like what I've done in my graduate school. So I did some studies on the biology of selected uh, zooplankton. And what is the application of that? Okay, if I, for example, if I do research on, um, if I use the information that I got about their population, not in ecological studies, for example, because uh, population of zooplankton and maybe planktons signal something. No, it tells us something. If this species, for example, is plenty during this season, it speaks about something. So uh, one specific example, which probably you're familiar with, is red tide. Now, so red tide is the uh, abundance of toxic uh, planktons in the water. So if we do not know about red tides, how can we tell people not to, add, to eat shellfish? Okay, so um, they are used to... Uh, warn us no, about some ecological aspects or the things that are happening in our environment. Okay, so in applied research, there are a lot of technology already being applied today, like uh, 
uh, creation of GMOs. Are you familiar with them? Or genetically modified organisms. So a lot of our grains, no, like yung palay, no, probably have uh, other varieties that have undergone genetic modification, like to be able to thrive in flooded areas or able to thrive in very dry areas. So they are genetically um, manipulated no, to to improve the quality. Also pharmaceuticals. So we do a lot of applied research in making of medicines. So prior to that, basic knowledge have been applied probably to the um, about diseases and how they inflict or how they uh, affect humans. Also alternative energy sources. Now, so we apply applied uh, applied research also in finding alternative energy sources like hydropower, we have geothermal. Why? Because uh, using coal is harmful to the environment. So the trend now is to look for other sources which are environmentally friendly. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand now um, why practical research is very important. Next, please. I'll give you more examples. So in the next slide, you'll be say, uh, seeing landmark advances in research. Next, please. So you'll see some advances in chemistry, physics, biology, and technology. Next slide, please. So you can see here that, and I also mentioned earlier, that what we are enjoying today actually can be traced back centuries ago when the beginnings of the technology that we are using were discovered by our scientists long time ago. So for example, in chemistry, so um, it was discovered before as a basic research about the chemistry of lipids, okay? So it was found out that LDL or the low density lipoproteins are the ones that causes arthrosclerosis or the blockage of the artery you know, of cholesterol, which causes uh, hypertension and some coronary diseases. So if not for that basic information, drugs or medicine to cure hypertension and coronary diseases would not have been invented. So another example is on physics, the use of laser, which was discovered a long time ago also. And then the technology of which we are now using in many surgical processes. In biology, the discovery of the green fluorescent protein by a, by a Japanese scientist, which he derived from jellyfish or a certain species of jellyfish, which we now use to mark cells like um, for gene expression and many other biotechnological studies. And our most favorite is the invention of the internet. So the invention of the internet actually is traced back now a long time ago also. And then the discovery of what you call packets. Now, so we have, because of that, we have now, we are now enjoying the internet. And of course, there are other applied researches that is being used in technology to improve services of uh, our internet provider. Like we already have fiber optics and the like. Okay, so at this point, I hope you realize that probably unknown to you, research works in our lives every day. Okay, and I hope <clears throat> by understanding that we will be able to um, uh, put more importance on the things that we have, and of course, our environment which God has given us. Okay, next slide, please. So let's proceed to the house of research. So how do we do research? Okay, so in this, from this point, I will be discussing 
the research process. Okay, so this is what my students do every year. Now, so here in CSMA, our senior high school students uh, apply the research process uh, in completing the studies every year. Next slide, please. Okay, so you can see here the research process. So what have you noticed? It's cyclical. Yes. By the way, you may you may type in your comments uh, in the comment section. Okay. So it's cyclical. So you see their numbers. So it means because it's a process, it follows a systematic process. So this is what I've been talking about previously or a while ago about research. So you just don't do research randomly, but you have to apply a scientific method. Okay, so you can see here there are eight steps. So I will be discussing each step, but not all the details of each step because due to limited time. So if I were you, I would enroll in CSMA because in CSMA, we teach and we practice research. So um, for those who are incoming uh, grade 11 students, I hope you would consider CSMA. So together we can learn research and uh, we can discover a lot of things about it. Next slide, please. So we will start from the first step. Next, please. Which is defining a research problem. Next, please. The first step is defining a research problem. So what does it mean? So you do not only state, you define. So defining means you have to be clear about your problem. Okay, what are the concepts that you want to study about? Because research always starts from a problem. There can be no research without a problem. Okay, if there is a problem, there is a solution. So we start from a problem and we have to find solutions for that problem. So in defining a problem, so in research we have what we call the variables. So as early as the first step, okay, it should be clear to you what are the concepts or what are the variables that you need to study. So in this step also, um, we are already trying to figure out the title of our topic. Okay. So next uh, step, please. The next step is reviewing related literature. Okay. So when you say reviewing related literature, review. So it means you have to read uh, different types of references which is related to your research. It may be a book, it may be journals, but usually we use in research those that are peer reviewed, those that have been reviewed by professionals in the same field. So under this uh, step, we have some certain considerations. So. When we are in the second step, we are actually looking into the things or we are improving our knowledge about the topic that we have in mind. So we read about it, we increase an, an, our understanding about it. But it is not only the purpose of review of related literature. Another purpose of reviewing the literature is to help you or to guide you where to put your topic in the current um, amount or current information that are already known. So, hindi kasi pwede sa research, uulit ka ng nagawa na. So, we always try for originality. So, we should be doing something that is original. So, by reviewing the literature, you'll be able to know if what you're planning has already been done or not. Okay? So within the review of related literature also, there are considerations to make. So how do you choose the right literature? 
no? Kasi if you type a keyword, for example, of your topic, you will see thousands, probably hundreds or thousands of similar topics. But uh, you should know how to choose only what is more or most important. And within the review of related literature also, students should learn how to cite the references. This is very, very important. Okay? So if you read a review of related literature, you will see their citations. These citations are uh, those authors no, or sources of information that you put in your paper to indicate that that part of your paper is not an original. It is not from you, but from other people. So this is very important in research that we acknowledge the knowledge of other people. So in the review of related literature, it is also where the value of or the principle of respecting intellectual property. Okay, it's very important in research. Hindi tayo pwedeng copy paste then submit kay teacher. Okay, so as a teacher also, I hope we should learn ways you know, of knowing whether a student only copied his work you know, or her work. Insert ko na, no? So, uh, in reviewing the literature, will be there should be citations, okay? And then plagiarism is a no-no in research. Plagiarism means stealing other people's ideas and claiming it as your own. Kasi pag wala kang nilagay din na pangalan, kung saan galing yan, it, it means that it's yours when actually it's not yours, okay? So it's actually a crime. We also have a law in the Philippines for that. Next, uh, next please. The third step is formulating the hypothesis. So a hypothesis is a guess, not just a guess, not just a random guess, but it's actually, or it actually evolved from the things that you have learned or from the, the literatures that you have reviewed, okay? So we have, we are also applying the, the principle of beginning with the end in mind. So, hindi ka pwedeng parang bulag lang na, na gumagawa ng research. No? So, you start, but you also look to the end. No? So, ano kaya ang kahihinat na nito? No? So, you also the, uh, see the end. Because a hypothesis is uh, based also on assumptions no, of your studies and based from your previous readings or the things that you have reviewed from the literature. Next, please. The fourth step is developing a research plan. So what is this? Now it's like making a blueprint of your research. So it is, it, this covers a wide area. No? Um, if you develop a research plan, nandun yung who will be my participants or what organism should I use? Um, where shall I conduct my experiment? Or am I going to do an experiment? Am I going to conduct a re uh, survey? Am I going to conduct an interview? So the strategies of data collection is also included there. And then how much of the population should I use? Should I use the whole population? Or how much of the population should I use? Or getting a sample of the population. And then when planning you, your research, it is also very important that you include a timetable. Okay? So ang research lagging may deadline yun. You cannot do research forever. So for example, if you're a student in college or in senior high school, you're allowed to do your research in one year. So you should be thinking of a study that you can finish within that period of time. Okay, so when are you going to start and when are you going to end? So every step also should have a timeline. Okay, and then within this step also, you also consider um, how are you going to collect data? Now, what strategies are you going to use? And of course, because you have the data, you need to analyze the data. So what strategies are, am I going to do? Am I going to do a qualitative approach or am I going to do a quantitative approach? Use statistics or numerical tools. Okay, next please. Now that you have a plan, now of course included in your plan are from steps one to four. And then the fifth stage is Collecting data. So this is also included, by the way, in your uh, planning. Okay, so data collection, never, never start collecting data unless you have a concrete plan of what to do in your study. 
Okay, so you collect data only after you have throw out your blueprint. Okay, so in data collection, there are strategies that you can use. No? Of course, you always go back to your objectives, to your problem. Okay? okay, so when you collect data, you have to consider the strategies that you need. Am I going to do an experiment? Or do I have to conduct a survey? Or shall I conduct an interview? Or other uh, strategies of collecting data. In collecting data also, you should also uh, learn how to manage it. Okay? Because there are data that are enormous. Pag marami na yan, you should be able to uh, also to learn how to use the spreadsheet. No? And uh, any other applications wherein which is convenient for you where you can store your data. Next, please. So number six is Anal analysis and interpretation of data. So you have a data. It is your duty to analyze it. What what does this data mean? Okay, so in the analysis of the data, as I previously mentioned, depend this objective. Mo. If you're going to um, uh, use qualitative research, you probably use coding or uh, narrative no? analysis and interpretation. So if you're doing the quantitative research should be up applying statistical tools, uh, inferential statistics or descriptive statistics. And then the interpretation of data, we usually visualize the information that we have gathered. Uh, so uh, we have to let our readers know what our data implied. So we interpret data through graphs. So there are also different types of graphs. Okay, to me, my bar, there are pie graphs or there are scatter plots. And in this step, it is important for students to learn uh, Excel, for example, or any other applications that wherein you can create graphs and uh, also to perform some mathematical uh, procedures you know, to analyze your data. Next, please. Okay, so number seven is writing the report. It is here at number seven, but it does not necessarily mean that after going through all the, the steps, noong ka palang susulat, no? It's there because it means you're ready, no? You're almost done with your paper, so you have to write it. But uh, you also start writing, no, from step one, right? Because you have to keep a record of everything, no? Or, or if not, you're going to forget what you're going to write. No? So if you're a researcher, you should also be a good note taker no? and keeper of records. So you write the report. So the report or the research paper has, has many parts. No? So if you enroll in a research class, you will learn how to write the paper. But what's important here is because research being a researcher you have a social obligation okay so you have to write your report so that you will reach the next step which is next please you need to share what you have learned okay so the step number eight is dissemination of the results Okay, so you, you have to share what you have learned. So dissemination of results you know, is, uh, can be done through publications you know, in scientific journals or probably attending conferences and presenting your results there. And dissemination also means uh, putting your results into action, maybe sharing or transferring the technology for the people. No, so that the people can use what you have studied. Because anyway, the, the ultimate purpose of research is to help humanity, no? to, to improve the lives of humanity. So now you've seen the research process. And uh, as I've said, um, research is not actually difficult once you know how to do it, no? step by step. So here in CSMA, we do this process step by step hanggang makabuo kami ng 
isang study. Okay? So, next please. So, next is I'm going to share with you what do students do no, in CSMA no, in their practical research um, subject. Okay? So, next slide please. Okay. So, for senior high school, so basically there are four types of research. So the first one is PR1 or the practical research one which is qualitative research. Now, ito yung pinakaunang uh, experience no, of the senior high school students when they are in grade 11. So in practical research one, we do qualitative research. No? So students learn how to interview, how to make interview questions and then interpret their results in narrative form no? and they also code the, their uh, data no? uh, by themes no? because that's how qualitative research works and then we have practical research 2 or PR2 so these are just examples of the textbooks that we use okay I'm not promoting any any textbooks okay so PR2 is quantitative research so in this subject students learn how to use the quantitative or the numerical approach. So here students use statistics, you know, they do experiments, they do survey, and other methods of data collection. And the third one is inquiries, investigations, and immersions, or what we call the I3. Uh, so here we focus more on investigatory projects, uh, investigatory science. So practical PR1, 2, and I3 are applied research subjects that are taken by all academic strands. Now, be it STEM, ABM, MEANS, GAS. Now, yung tatlo yan. However, yung last one, which is the research capstone, this is special for STEM students uh, because it also has an equivalent uh, subject in other strands like um, business simulation for ABM, and then immersion for humes and gas. Okay, so basically ito yung mga research that a senior high school students should take before graduating. Okay, next please. So from here, I'll be showing you, now what do we do in our research classes? Okay, so this one is a picture of the first batch, yung mga panganay ko ito. Okay, so can see them here always busy so in the classroom uh, they uh, we, we do uh, research uh, in groups no? so we form groups and then uh, during class hours uh, we do some brainstorming activities no? so like uh, you come up with a topic and then uh, discuss no? what to do with that so you can see there in the picture they are seriously discussing things there and then they have also projects no? so, um, first but nato the research um, I didn't set any any limits or any theme. No? So, so, but my students here proposed research or did research which are they deem useful no, for the school. So you can see also in the pictures that they are presenting. So, nakita nyo kanina sa research process, you have to present your research. You have to share what you learned. So my students were given a chance to present their study in the classroom. And ultimately, at the end of the year, they have to present their study in front of a panel. So in the middle, in picture in the middle, you can see there the panel. No? Their classmates are also attending. So it's one way also of sharing what they have learned in their respective studies. So a lot of students fear this. No? But actually, after this, after the activity of defending their thesis, my students are like, oh, they're throwing everything. They're very happy as if they have already graduated. Kahit hindi pa. Hindi pa nila alam kung pumasa sila. Okay? So, my previous students could attest to that. No? So, they, they, they have, I couldn't forget no, one of my students' reflections. Sabi niya, if you take research, you have to undergo all kinds of emotions. You laugh, you enjoy, you cry. Difficult. So, isn't it exciting, right? Now, do you experience different emotions? Okay. So, 
Next slide, please. In the next batch, I started introducing here um, studies no, that concerns the environment. Okay, so after here, I started uh, introducing uh, the importance of plastic waste management. So yung mga studies nila dito are uh, environmentally friendly innovation. So in the second year, we focused more on innovation. So students here came up with the innovation. So, so the, they innovate, for example, from garbage or from plastic wastes. No? They turn it into something useful also uh, for the school and for the community. So you can see them presenting their products. And then the center, no, that's the uh, after the grueling moments that they have underwent. And then they seem to enjoy. Una lang naman ang kabay. After that, they enjoy. They should have shown also pictures that they are jumping and throwing uh, their their notes, no, in the air in 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 happiness that they are done with research. Okay, next please. The third batch is we also focused on plastic wastes. Okay, so this time we made a theme to utilize plastics in their projects. Okay, so some of them made use of windmill using plastic bottles. Some of them invented some hydropower uh, source of energy no? to uh, to be used for charging gadgets, yung mga ano lang, no? those uh, uh, gadgets or instruments that utilize no? a little amount of energy. Some of them also use uh, plastics in making mats, no? to, and then they, they, they installed some piezoelectric material no? to harness or to gather energy from the mats, no? and a lot more. So, um, that was the third batch. And you can see them showing the panel, their uh, products. Next, please. Okay, the, this batch is, of course, different. No? Because of the pandemic, we were not able to do uh, research outside. No? Actually, I haven't met my students no, personally. Sad. Because... Uh, I'm used to interacting with them in the classroom, and uh, uh, but anyway, you know, even though I haven't met them, we were able to complete the research process as well. So this time we focused on studies pertaining to online classes to make it more relevant to them. You no, know? so they have topics like um, distractions for students, you no, know? during online classes. Uh, maybe some did studies on ice train, you know, digital ice train, and then some also studied uh, use of optical lenses. You know? So very, very uh, useful for those who are taking online classes. You know? We also had presentations. Now, may defense din sila. You know? So it's also online. So you can see pictures there you know, of our faculty there, Sir Clarence, Miss May, you know, in the panel. Okay, so you have seen that in CSMA, it's like, it's not only fun and difficulties, no? Kaya nga sabi ko, different emotions. So, of course, um, prior to reaching this point, no? Of learning things. Um, next next slide, please. I'd like, just want to, to show you, no? Next, please. That... Students in CSMA acquire, I would say, special, no? Maybe I could also say has an edge, no? Because of the following things. So students in CSMA, no? Apply appropriately the research process, no? I make sure, no? I'm with them all the way, no? From step one up to the end of their research. So we apply appropriately. So the keyword is there is appropriately the research process. No? So from step one to the end. Next, please. So students also learn to think critically. So this is very important in research. You do not just rely on what you read, but you also have to think. 
so creative imagination uh, also works no so they think critically no because research is problem based learning and then uh, they think and analyze things on their own next please they also apply ethical principles of research so in uh, oh no, so they could be connect to the real world so it means that they uh, apply problems or they use problems that are common in their daily life no? so they propose topics that are related to real world problems and then they apply ethical principles of research so here in csma we do not only teach academics we also teach values which is very very important okay so <clears throat> some of the ethical principles that they apply are honesty respect for intellectual property confidentiality legality so um respect for intellectual property ito lagi ako na focus dito no because this is this can be applied by anybody kahit kinder man yan elementary high school or senior high school college kahit sino no because we always have to acknowledge our sources a reminder for everybody so if it's not yours if you took it from the internet you have to cite it okay so my previous students could attest to this, no? that I always emphasize this on class. And probably a lot of them are already applying this principle no? in their college life. Okay, next please. They also learn to work cooperatively because research is done by group. So working with others is very important. No, you cannot be an island. Even in the real world, research is done in, by teams. Right? You have to work with others. So very important um, um, value of working harmoniously with others. So of course, pag group yan, laging may problema yan. But they learn to settle it. Now with my with my guidance, of course. Minsan sobra na hindi, ma'am hindi na kaya. But in the end, no, they are able to uh, get through it. Then next please. Because they 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 always practice presentations, they work on the analysis of their data on their own. They become adept no, in scientific writing or academic writing, and they become confident in doing um, presentations. So I think uh, yung mga panganay ko yung first batch nyo could attest to that because some of them are already doing their thesis no, in college. So some of them said they gained confidence you know, in presenting their papers. Sabi nga ng isa kong estudyante, ma'am, parang nga akong panel ngayon eh. I look at all angles, hanap ng butas. Ano kaya pwedeng itanong ng panel? Okay, so I'm really happy about those feedbacks. Okay, so ito yung mga bagay that are very, very important no, in education. No? So not only academics, but uh, also values. So I'd like also to recommend, next please, that research need not be need not come late you now in our lives. So I recommend here. So actually the first one is can can our viewers see that? Okay. So we should start them young. Actually, we can start introducing research even in the elementary and high school. You no. Know? So like encourage them to be curious, you no, know, to, to to base your teaching on problems, you no know, problem solving. Uh, based learning no and then maybe uh, research concepts like my hypothesis maybe how do we uh, collect information so even elementary pupils can do that next please we should also provide them no rich scientific and practical learning experiences so we can integrate in our lessons no? some activities that would uh, encourage them to think no and do things and relate those things in the real world. Next, please. This I have been in emphasizing every time. No? Uh, the next uh, thing that I want to show there is about teaching them ethical principles of research. Now start them young. For example, this one, stop plagiarism. Okay, especially this is very relevant during these online classes. We should be now for teachers, I encourage you to be vigilant about what your students submit to you. Kasi ngayon, napakadali lang eh. They can just copy-paste, 
na submit it to you and impress na impress ka naman ang ganda naman ng sagot but you know baka naman kinopya niya lang yon so we should also take uh, caution no in examining our students work and the best thing of course is to teach them how to do it the right way no so anak if you for example if you search something from the internet please cite your source saan galing yan even the the cite yung url no you can include them in their work actually i, I encourage my son no? uh, my son to do that pero sagot sa akin alam niya kung ano why should i do that my other classmates doesn't don't do that maiba naman ako so it means if we practice this no everybody practice this in school then hindi na maiilang yung ibang bata if everybody practice that okay and next please okay teach the value of collaboration no this is very important so hindi lang maggrupo mo din tama na no so the teacher should also be with them and guide them uh, along the way okay so lastly i just want to next please to leave this uh, message to everybody, especially for teachers. Uh, this is from Alexander Chen for this. The best teachers are those who show where to show you where to look. Tuturo niyo sa inyo, saan kayo titingin, but they will not tell you what you can see. It's up to you to discover it on your own by using your potentials, you know, the top, the potentials of your students. Okay, so next please. I think that is all for today. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope you have learned from my lecture. Yes. Um, thank you, Ms. Salve, for a very interesting and practical topic on research. So, Take away ko ma'am nung diniscuss niyo po yung about sa research, na-realize ko yung idea na research is not necessarily should be academic. It's all about life as well. So halos lahat ng aspects ng buhay nandito. So for example, yung values po, even the process, even the emotion. So alam na ko yung emotion, eh, mapipil mo pala lahat. Yak, tawa, lungkot. So I hope sa mga nakikinig sa, nakikinig sa lecture ni ma'am, makita rin na meron ding enjoy, enjoyable moment in this, ano, in this endeavor, in research. And gaya nga na sabi ni ma'am, um, we, um, we must develop, instill in our students or in everyone the, what do you call that? The, not the, the discipline or the value of research. So ma'am, um, Marami pong salamat dun po sa sobra pong meaningful and valuable um, sharing of um, discussion of the topic. Okay na po kayo? Hindi na po kayo kinakabahan? <laughs> okay na po. So, later po ma'am, um, ah, sorry. So, before we move on to the next part of our lecture, ma'am, meron pa po tayo. Uh, we will have a short break and within five minutes, we will do the open forum. So, kung meron pong question ang mga students or mga viewers po natin, kindly comment sa se comment section ng ating live stream para po matulungan din po tayo at ma-enlighten tayo ni Ms. Sabi in, in relation to research. Okay, so we will be back after a bit. So please stand by. Marami pong salamat. Thank you, Ms.
Okay, so we're back for our open forum. Okay, so if there are questions in the if there are questions or concerns, please write it. Uh, please type it in the comment box. So while waiting for the some comments, uh, meron na po mga na private chat or text message po ng kanilang mga tanong para po para po sa inyo bisalve. So simulan na po natin para po mapigyan na po ng linaw yung kanilang mga tanong. Okay, so first question po is this, ma'am. Um, how do senior high school students um, benefit from their practical research subjects? Yung mga students po natin in senior high, how did they benefit in, the, in those subjects in research? Okay, thank you, sir, for that uh, uh, wonderful note. Um, very... Okay. So, pan, ano nga ba? No? I, I have... Uh, discuss some of the benefits actually no, in uh, my presentation kanina. No? So like they were able to um, practice no? critical thinking, um, apply appropriately the process of research. But I'd like to share no? because I could only see the benefit of this after they leave CSMA. Okay, so uh, while in CSMA I have seen them work, no? Uh, so they're able to apply it. So it means they have learned. So after they graduated from CSMA, so a few days ago, I gathered some feedback you know, from my former students, you know, from the first to the third batch, um, those who are already in college. So I asked them, you know, what aspects of the things or the concepts that we have uh, learned or that you have learned in research, are you able to apply in college? Because actually one of the purpose no, of research, of course, no, of the subjects, the research, is to prepare students in their college life, right? So any any subjects naman, no, in the uh, senior high school or even the junior high school. So they, the feedbacks are like this. No? So when they, when they are doing their research, they were able to apply First of all, no, most of them answered ethical principles of uh, respect for intellectual property. This is very important because a lot of the universities are very strict about this. If they cut you plagiar uh, plagiarizing, you know, they can be stripped off of your degree or you can get a failing grade. So they are very thankful that they were able to learn how to cite sources properly. No? So citing ideas or respect no, of uh, other people's uh, intellectual property. Another thing is how to um, define no? and uh, define and uh, formulate research problems because that's very, very important. No? Even how they uh, make the research title. So di ba nga? Sometimes we hear people say, title pa lang, pabalik-balik na, isang taon na, hindi pa na-approve. So there must be probably wrong no, with the title. Of course, ang topic mo should be feasible. No? That's also one thing that they learned. No? How to propose topics that are possible, that, that are doable. So it's also very important. No? And asking the right questions. Because in step one, which is defining a research problem, you also formulate questions which will guide you all throughout your research, kasi yun ang mag-guide sa'yo, anong method ang gagamitin mo, what strategies of data collection are you going to do. No? Even the analysis, because those are the questions that you will answer, and and you can say, pag nasagot mo yan, you have done your objectives. So, you know, the ethical principles of uh, citing or citation, um, mostly ganun. No? So, I think the benefit of that is that, and another thing pala, no, they, they, they become more confident in presenting. No? So, for them kasi, parang sabi niya isa, ma'am, easy-easy na lang kasi we have gone through it. A lot of it no, in the senior high school of presentations. So, when they had uh, presentations, some of them have, kailan lang, no? maybe two of my students messaged me. They were done with their presentation, the final piece presentation. While some are still working on them, so, yung mga nakatapos with a test that uh, 
they really have gained that confidence. Uh, I think those are the benefits, no? I, I think they have been prepared. They have been prepared in that aspect of uh, research. And that's very important, not respecting intellectual property. You know, it only means that they have learned values from our school. So, dala dala nila yung Monikan pagka Monikan after graduating. I, I, I hope I have uh, answered that question. Oh, thank you, Ms. Salve. So, narinig ko yung, yung meron akong narinig. So, kapag pala nag, uh, when under your tutelage, tutelage or guidance, um, research will become easy in college. Parang ganun po yung mga feedback ng ating mga students. <laughs> Tapos, um, nakakatawa po dun sa, uh, naka, um, 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 very fruitful, uh, very meaningful dun sa sinabi po natin is yung the aspect of, hindi nyo po sinas, lagi nyo pong sinasabi yung aspect ng process. So sa lahat po, even in research, you should trust the process. Hindi tayo dapat magawa ng shortcut like doing um, um, plagiarism because it will affect what is our what res what our research will be not only our not only our research but also ourselves our values our identity so ang kahalagahan ng process in research is really important for us to to make sense of what we are of course what we are searching what we are researching and thank malamit po salamat dun sa ganun uh, dun sa ganun pong um, guidance sa binibigay po niyo sa ating mga students at mga alumni na graduate na po, graduate na po ngayon and still pursuing, doing research. Thank you, ma'am. Um, meron pa pong tanong? Uh, ayun, meron pa pong tanong. Um, this is matindi pong question na to, ma'am. Na Question is this, ma'am. Is publication, the publication of research, the ultimate goal of all or of every research? Publication po ba ang ultimate goal ng ating mga ginagawa research? Yun po yung question. Question. <laughs> Okay, so probably the question stemmed from the research process no? because it's the last step. Eh, no? that, that was the dissemination of the results no? comes in the last step. Actually, it's cyclical. Siya, no? it, um, we can publish and then later on because man has unending questions. No? We are always curious. So after publication, you can actually go back, make another research, no? make another problem and then solve it um actually no because if we really go back to the ultimate goal of research which is um to improve human lives no? because kung yun lang ang goal mo no, just to publish there are a lot of publications thousands of publications hindi naman nagagamit eh. like for example in basic research no for May mga, may mga bagay na natutunog lang because they, they are not being utilized. Right? So I think the ultimate goal of research is not really to publish. Of course, depende naman yun, no? kung ano yung goal mo personally. You know? But for others, maybe for scientists, for career development, no? they need to publish. Um, I think the, the goal of research is how it can reach people. Ito pa pala, isa pa. I'd like to share, no? So one of my students, no, ito yung sinabi niya sa akin when I asked for feedback. Sabi niya, um, I think one thing that I could not, that always comes into my mind when I see, when I think of research is, para kanino yung research? Yan ang tanong niya. Why do we do research? For whom? Okay, so I think, yun ang sagot, no? You do research because you want to, to, to reach out to people. You want your, your knowledge or your work to be utilized by the people. So I think the, the ultimate goal of research is for your for the knowledge that you have gained from it will be able to reach people and help them improve their lives. I think you know. So, thank you, ma'am. So, para kanino mo ito ginagawa? Para yung tanong sa commercial, yung tanong sa commercial, para kanino ka bumuba? So, research is always may purpose po talaga. So, kapag hindi po natin, hindi clear ang purpose natin, may tendency talaga tayo na hindi siya ituloy or in a half-way titigil po natin. So, mahalaga po ang 
purpose sa lahat purpose of the study sa lahat ng sa, sa lahat mo ng ating ginagawa in life and even in research so as well yung purpose ng research yung sabi ko ni ma'am sabi niyo po is to connect people so we're not just doing research for ourselves we are doing research for the benefit of other people for the sabi niyo po kanin, for the benefit of humanity and and when we are doing this research of course mayroong mga mayroong mga may sabi niya po hindi po nasa mayroong pong mga research pa po na continuing matutulungan or magka, matutulungan po yung mga press mga future researchers sa pag pag um pagtakel ulit ng problem na yon in a different light in a different context so yun po ma'am marami pong salamat dun sa and sa question sa answer po dun sa question on publication so it's not about not necessarily about publication it's about for the purpose of for the purpose to connect people and help humanity thank you po ma'am meron po ang question hmm. meron pa so far wala pong follow up question Okay, sige po. Okay, sige po. Sige ma. Okay, so at the, um, we, would, we would like to express our gratitude to Mom Salve for her generosity for sharing and for sharing her enriching thoughts on how we can make um, uh, how we can make use or utilize research not only in, uh, in, in the academic but also in our daily life. So Thank you, ma'am, for being with us here. And also, thank you for those people who join us during this live lecture. Okay? So, our program later will resume at 2 in the afternoon. So, we will be, the, the next lecture will be about electrical energy. So, it's a very important aspect of our day-to-day -day lives. So, once again, thank you for being with us this morning. Ms. Salve, marami pong salamat sa inyo pong, um, sa inyo pong pag- Sa inyo pong uh, pag, pagmamahal. Thank you po ma'am. So, thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you po.